Okay, this is going to be a remake of the first tutorial. Uh, there was a couple of re requests for me to add a couple more, uh, some more information um, that better suits and more further explains some things, and adds a whole um, some more things that are uh, important and um, keeping organized the fi sound files organized for the audio team and uh, audio post production. Also. Um, uh, how to export the AAF and OMF files um, in order to import the audio um, information um, into Pro Tools to where it stays on um, it, on the time code as well. Also metadata for the sound files that uh, should be entered in so that say you have more than one take um, for a dialogue so it, like you did um, 10 takes um, for this one scene because of um, it, no, ambient noise uh, was just too much. Say a plane flew over by, so you had to retake it over and over and over again until um, it was just right. Um, yeah, that way, when it's in Pro Tools, all that metadata, the additional information, will be there, and it'll um, Pro Tools can read that, and um, it'll be so much easier for the audio guys to navigate through it. We'll get more in depth in this and further on the Pro Tools side and further videos. And I'll get more in depth on what I'm explaining right now you know, once I'm into well, creating the metadata. And well, let's get started. Uh, we'll start with the metadata, uh, creating metadata. Um, what I'm going to use is this uh, Wave Agent. Uh, Wave Agent is a free program from um, Sound Devices. You get it at uh, their website, sounddevices.com, and download it for, directly from them. Install it it's for Windows and Mac. Um, here we can go into, you know, open it up, click import, uh, we're going to just dot here, come in here, select the voiceover dialogues, hit open, bam, right here we have some information, one already has it, um, has some of the metadata on it, uh, right here you'll see that the start time codes are already um, uh, time stamped in, uh, it tells you the length, tells you when it was created, the sample rate, um, this one has the frame rate as well. We'll click on it. It shows you channels. That's a mono channel. Uh, so we're going to come here. It's 48K. We're going to leave it at 48K. We're going to change this to... Uh, let's, let's change it to the 29979 drop. Uh, we're going to preserve time uh, start time code. That way, once it's entered in, it, uh, Pro Tools will know where it, where it needs to go. We're going to do, okay, scene one, boom, take one, good, and it's not a wild track, we'll get more in it to a wild track here soon. Project one, tape one, and we're going to save this, and we're going to hit boom, save, okay, all right, updating file, okay, now we're going to import one more file, uh, we're going to, room noise, open, this would be a wild track. Um, there's two channels on this one it shows right here. 48k still. Uh, we're going to change this to 2997 non-drop. Uh, it is wild track. We'll click wild track. What wild track is is um, like room tone. So uh, it doesn't have a it doesn't necessarily have to be at an exact time time on the time code line. It could uh, be placed anywhere. Uh, room tone is to help fill in um, dialogue during dialogue editing to make everything sound natural and smooth, uh, like it was recorded in one spot. Like let's say you had ADR done to replace some of the uh, um, the onset um, audio. Uh, this would be placed in there to help get that uh, scene one. We'll just leave that scene one so you know what scene it was taken with. Right here we're gonna not preserve time code though, that way because it doesn't doesn't need it. Uh, we're going to hit save, okay, and bam. Over here you'll see that it has a yes or a Y under wild to let you know that it is a wild track. Uh, we can do it for all these other things like enter in the specific information, but uh, you get the gist of it. And Final Cut Pro, I have already gone in and imported our system files. I have our header sample movie and our tail pop and then I also entered it brought in a few of the dialogue tracks uh, right here though we'll go in and 
and slide in our header. The header also has the the two pop um, audio clip already added in. It's important to have that in because um, for sync purposes when it brought into Pro Tools. If you don't have that and the audio's all screwed up, there's really no reference point on how to get it back. You just have to do the tedious work and it takes a long time in order to get it there. This way we have our the, the sound along with the visual uh, from the very start. And your two pop, you want two pop to be right at 59 minutes, 58 seconds, and zero frames. Um, so that way, right when that ends, your first frame of action starts right at one hour. And how we're going to do that is we're going to enter in right here in our timeline. Um, segment, enter in one hour. Put our cursor, timeline cursor, right at one hour. So now we can take our sample movie and snap it in right at one hour. Boom. And here we're going to drag our header right up against that. And now we're going to come here back to our timeline deal to enter in 59, 58, 59 minutes, 58 seconds, and zero frames. This will hit enter, boom, there's your two, and the sound, the bleep is at right there as well. And now we're going to drag in our tail pop, and here, boom, right to the end. Tail pop has the audio on it as well, which happens two seconds after the last frame of action. What we're going to do now is we're just going to drag in this the dialogue tracks. We're going to drag them in anywhere on their separate tracks. Um, this is just for demonstration purposes. This audio does not go along with this video at all. Uh, we're just putting it in there just so you can see for demonstration purposes. There. And this last one. Boom. Okay, now what we're going to do is um, enter in our um, time code burn and our uh, feet plus frames burn. Um, and how we do that is we have to come over here to our bin, project bin. We're going to do right click or control click, new sequence. And we're going to leave that as it. Sequence 2, and we're going to double click right here to open up our new sequence over in the timeline and the canvas. And what we're going to do is click and drag sequence 1 and throw it into the canvas of sequence 2. Hit yes on this so that everything, um, all the settings are cor uh, corresponding. Now you'll see that it enters in everything on timeline on sequence 2 as one thing. And we need to set our in and out points on sequence 1. So we'll come over here to sequence 1. We're going to come to the start. We're going to hit I for end point. Come to the end. Hit O to set our out point. Come back to sequence 2. We're going to come here, select it, Right click on it, control click, open and viewer. We're going to come up to effects, video filters, video, time code generator, and there you have it. That's your time code. Uh, how we're going to do this, we need to move it and resize it possibly. And right here, we're just going to rename this, put a colon in there, boom, add a space. Uh, format, we're going to leave it 2997. Uh, size, let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. Move it, click on the target sign right here in the center. And move it up over here. Now we're going to click uh, the ignore opacity because we want to change the opacity. We're going to move this down. We're going to go back to effects and add our Feet, uh, feet plus frames burning. Go to video filters, video, 
timecode generator again same thing come over here to filters come down here we're gonna rename this F plus F or B plus frames change the format to 35 millimeters And over here, we're going to change the size, size it down, boom, uh, move it up into the right hand corner, uncheck the opac ignore opacity, so we can change the opacity down. Now when you hit play, it has your time code frames, uh, there's feet plus frames in there as well. Now we'll come back to sequence one. Okay, we're gonna export it. And we're gonna click using QuickTime conversion. Sample two, click on options, settings, compression type. We're going to use HDV. 720p 30 because uh, our 2997 is what it's at. Uh, we're going to use current frame rate. You don't want to convert any of um, your frame rate at all. You use the current frame rate for the project. Um, we're going to hit OK. Filter, you don't need to change anything. Boom. Size, we're going to change the size um, to 720 by 480 or you can even do uh, 640 by 480 as well uh, but what we'll do is 720 by 480 16 9 and that usually is um, a pretty good standard right there uh, click OK sound we do not need to export the sound with it that's going to be exported with the OMF or the AAF as well um, we're not going to prepare for internet um, streaming and now we're going to hit OK and we're going to hit save and now it is going to render and export our video okay now I'm going to show you how to export the um, the AAF fi um, files or an OMF file uh, which exports the audio and the current timeline in its exact same position so when you uh, import the AAF file or the OMF file it'll um all the audio will be in the same um, same spot that it is here on the timeline and what you do is I accidentally closed out of this uh, I already exported one that correspond that was with what we had with the four um, dialogue tracks on there, but I accidentally closed out of it afterwards without saving it, so and without recording it. So what we're gonna do here is I'll show you the steps to go through it and how to do it, and um, that way you'll know how to do it. Um, and then we'll go next video will be how to get everything into Pro Tools and how to set up Pro Tools. Okay, file, export, and Remember to get the automatic duck, which is right here. Export plugin for uh, Final Cut Pro 7. Uh, they also have it for Final Cut Pro X uh, as well. And uh, it's a free download at automaticduck.com. I'll put the links to the programs, the free programs that I'm using in the information as well. Uh, you click on it. And you have to use the automatic duck one. If you do it straight from Final Cut Pro's default one, it's going to completely erase your metadata from the audio files. Automatic Duck does not, it, it keeps the meta metadata in there. Open it up and name it, name it what you want. I already put it, saved it in here as sequence one AAF. Um, you can come in here to edit settings and change this stuff if you want. Um, and then also you want to put handles on your audio. I put 30 frames, you could change this, shorten it or lengthen it. Um, usually um, six frames will do 
So do six frames handles and then hit save. Or you can do OMF from here. Do select OMF, go to edit settings. And in order to keep the metadata files with the OMF files, you have to do OMF2 compose, composition only. So don't do this, do uh, OMF for digital audio workstations. It will not work with Pro Tools with keeping the metadata. OMF2 is the only one that keeps the metadata. Hit save. And then you'll hit save again, and then it will export your OMF file or your AAF file. All right, that's it for today. Um, next video will be in Pro Tools and how to import everything.